From rejecting an alleged invitation for the tragic Titanic expedition to getting spooked by the comments made by Ross Kemp's production team, this is the real reason Mr. Beast turned down the submarine mission. Starting with how Mr. Beast narrowly escaped death by opting out of a trip to the Titanic. Apparently, Jimmy was one of the few people who were offered the opportunity to participate, but he said no. He even went on Twitter and thought it's kind of scary that he could have been on it because he dodged a big bullet there. In fact, he attached a screenshot of a text message he allegedly received. The message was from one of the unfortunate passengers who met their tragic fate and that very passenger inviting him to join them. But it really is super scary to think that our YouTuber turned philanthropist could have been lost to the sea. Experts are now scrambling to talk about what could have happened, claiming that they were warned against the safety flaws on the Titan. Even legendary filmmaker James Cameron himself chimed in, saying that the submarine wasn't up to par. It seems like everyone knew that something wasn't right, and unfortunately their worst fears became a reality. Sure, the Titan had completed successful missions in the past, mostly to the infamous Titanic wreck, but people saw the remote-controlled submarine as a ticking time bomb, just swimming toward catastrophe. Well, guess what? That moment arrived, and just calling it catastrophic would be a massive understatement at this point. And Jimmy isn't the only famous personality that rejected the offer. Apparently, there's others like him who declined invitations to take a ride on Ocean Gate's submarine. Jay Bloom and Ross Kemp were among the lucky ones who said thanks, but no thanks to what they saw as a disaster waiting to happen. And if you thought that was enough, social media has been unforgiving, specifically in pointing out the obvious. I mean, it was literally controlled by a Logitech wireless gaming controller and in no way equipped to handle a deep sea expedition. But OceanGate is desperately trying to defend themselves, even though it's a lost cause at this point. By now, everyone agrees that this company isn't competent enough to deal with these kinds of trips, and neither is their submersible. Even the authorities have come under fire for giving false hope to the public, leading them to believe that there was a chance of finding the passengers alive. But the thing is, the moment the vessel lost all communication with the surface was the moment it imploded into the debris field found on the seabed next to the Titanic wreck. Now that the failed rescue mission is a thing of the past, the focus has shifted to recovering the shattered fragments of the Titan, mainly to uncover the truth behind its implosion. In fact, the U.S. Coast Guard announced that they'll be conducting a Marine Board of Investigation. This is the highest level of investigation carried out by the U.S. Coast Guard, and they mean business. But this investigation isn't a solo thing anymore. I mean, it's gone international, with American, British, French, and Canadian authorities all joining forces to get to the bottom of this tragedy. OceanGate may be a US-based company, but the Titan was operating in international waters after getting registered in the Bahamas. And the support ship flew the Canadian flag, while the unfortunate victims were from England, France, Pakistan, and the good old USA. Leading the charge in this high-stakes investigation is none other than Coast Guard Captain Jason Neubauer. This guy is no joke, and the accident site has been mapped out, with the investigation currently in its initial evidence collection phase. So the salvaging of debris from the Titan is in full swing, with every piece being collected and examined in coordination with Canadian authorities in St. John's, Newfoundland. But why did the Titan implode in the first place? Well, it turns out that the concerns about the Titan's safety were raised all the way back in 2018. Submersible expert Carl Stanley even sent an email to the creator of this vessel, specifically after hearing unsettling cracking noises during a dive, which is bizarre to think about because the submersible descended to a depth of over 12,000 feet, with the sounds only growing louder the further down they went. And the design of this submersible is raising eyebrows, too. It was built using titanium and carbon fiber. But the problem people had wasn't with the material. It was with its very odd shape when compared to other deep sea vessels designed for these depths. After all, most of the subs that are able to dive down that deep have a spherical shape because that shape has a better structural integrity and fewer occupants. But the Titan decided to cram five people into a 22 foot long tube with a space that was just nine feet wide and eight feet high. Who needs comfort and safety when you can have a claustrophobic nightmare, right? Clearly not Mr. Beast or YouTuber Jake Kohler, better known as Dally Meat, who shared his own footage from his canceled expedition with Ocean Gate's CEO Stockton Rush and Titanic expert Paul Henri Narjolet, both of whom met their untimely death on the submersible. 
so Kohler really dodged a bullet there like Mr. Beast, who admitted that if his dive wasn't canceled, it could have been him inside that submarine. But Kohler and Jimmy aren't the only ones who escaped this tragedy. Las Vegas financier Jay Bloom and his son Sean had their sights set on the bucket list Titan trip, but thankfully, they trusted their instincts. Young Sean revealed that his father warned him about how dangerous it is, emphasizing that the submarine can't survive going that deep in the ocean. After all, it is a small vessel with five people crammed inside, and that's obviously a recipe for disaster in their eyes. The worst part is, OceanGate's CEO wasn't willing to listen to any conflicting opinions, and unfortunately, Rush's belief in the project seemed to blind him to the risks. There's no wonder why Mr. Beast opted out of the trip and declined the invitation. I mean, there was one red flag after the next. So, he ended up trusting his gut and steer clear of danger, no matter how tempting the adventure was. Now, the details surrounding who extended the invitation to him in the first place is still unknown. This is partly why he's being accused of lying about the invitation to board the Titan submersible vessel. I mean, social media users wasted no time in calling him out, pointing out that the message box in his screenshot was blue, which raised questions since iPhone texts that are sent to the receiver are usually green. So naturally, the Twitterati questioned the authenticity of the alleged invitation. But our boy offered an explanation for the blue message, saying that a friend had sent him the screenshot of the invitation because he didn't want to scroll up and find the old conversation himself. But some Twitter users still aren't convinced, and they're asking him to go into the message history and show everyone evidence to support his claims. His explanation aimed to address any doubts regarding the authenticity of the screenshot, emphasizing that it was a misunderstanding rather than a lie. Besides, he clearly has the money and resources to make a trip like that, that is, if he wants to. But if he had participated in a dive with Ocean Gate, there's a possibility that he would have safely returned to land, but it was still very, very uncertain. As of now, the YouTuber hasn't responded, which means that he's probably not going to go deeper into this subject. So, those doubting him are unlikely to get an answer out of him. But there's no reason for him to lie. I mean, he's not the only one who was approached. Now for the Ross Kemp invitation. Ross's production team thought the mission was too risky, so he eventually passed on the opportunity. Now, Mr. Beast is pretty smart, and he probably saw all these famous people declining left, right, and center, which is probably why he didn't want to go himself. After all, there were so many risks, and considering what happened, it was the right decision for him to opt out. Besides, why would a man who's so popular lie? I mean, with over 162 million subscribers, he's the most followed creator on YouTube who created an empire with his outrageous giveaways, insane challenges, and heartwarming charitable initiatives. So he could have easily afforded the $200,000 ticket. Besides, he's no stranger to pushing boundaries either. But this time, he narrowly escaped a brush with fate. Either way, the Ocean Gate Titan disaster has gotten everybody in the world talking and questioning the delicate balance between adventure and safety. So as we try to deal with the aftermath of this tragedy, one thing is clear. The conversations surrounding accountability, risk management, and the pursuit of extraordinary experiences will continue to be talked about, especially since the whole incident is being investigated by the U.S. Coast Guard. So, from getting spooked by the comments made by Ross Kemp's production team, to rejecting an alleged invitation for the tragic Titanic expedition, this was the real reason Mr. Beast turned down the submarine mission.